everyone must be absolutely silent. Andrea Marshall and her team are looking for a large sea creature, the dugong. Andrea! Andrea! The dugong is extremely shy and can easily outswim the humans. This park is so incredibly important for megafauna species, especially threatened ones like manta rays and dugongs. Um, this really is the last habitat left in Africa um, for dugongs. Um, this is the last viable population of dugongs uh, that we have along this coastline. Um, and for manta rays, this was an incredible place. This was, um, in all my travels around the world, I've never encountered a location where both species of manta rays live. Uh, so this makes us such a critical habitat for manta rays, and this is one of the reasons why I've dedicated my life to doing research in southern Mozambique. The marine biologist and her team have been doing research in the Bazaruto archipelago for 13 years. These nutrient-rich waters are a favorite breeding ground for several large fish and marine mammal species. Even though it's a protected area, fish stocks have been dwindling. Tomas Manasse was born on the main island. He supervises 23 rangers for the national park. He says they need to be more to cover the many jobs rangers have to do. <laughs> they go on patrols, collect data and provide information. Local people want to know why farming has to be limited on the islands, and fishing as well. Manasse and his brothers are the first in their family who don't make a living from fishing. It's the only way the region will have a future, he says. The communities outside the national park have no spaces where the fish can reproduce. As fish stocks decline, the pressure grows. That leads to ever greater conflicts with the fishermen from the mainland. They even encroach on the totally protected areas to go fishing. Just outside the park, there are many more gill nets than there used to be. It's hardly possible for any fish to escape, and now they're declining. But what alternatives do the fishermen have for their livelihoods? This is a really, really important area for the beauty, for the heritage. Uh, of not Maybe the tourism. Of the of Andrea Marshall and her team have invited 10 park rangers and their new superior to take part in training. It's the first professional training many of them have ever had. Such an exciting day for me. I've been, we've been anticipating doing an event like this um, for government, for a national park, for a very long time. Um, for me, being a researcher out here in Mozambique, I, I've been stuck for many years. I've been trying to find out how to work better with government, how to help try and build capacity more. They think is most important. Park director Ricardina Matuse is relatively new. For the first time, they've been working closely together. On a map, they mark exactly where they've seen what animal species and compare the sightings with the researchers' data. This course is very important. If we manage to work together well on the first phase, we'll be able to negotiate a second and a third. We'll learn how to go diving ourselves to show the tourists the fish and other things. Many of them have to learn how to swim. The park director goes first. I'm so glad I'm finally learning to swim. I've wanted to do this all my life. I'm just hoping it all goes well. The intensive course lasts five days. Those who already know how to swim learn snorkeling and diving. But this group is starting from the beginning. The teacher tells them to relax. It takes some courage for them to lift their feet off the bottom. It's not unusual that the local people don't know how to swim. Hardly any of the fishermen have ever learned. But many say they always wanted to, because how can they protect the sea animals, know the reefs, and react in an emergency if they never come in contact with the water? But first, they have to learn to let go of their fear. 
I feel really good for the first time. With the help of these professionals, I can learn things I wasn't able to before. By the end of the course, almost everyone here will be able to swim in the open ocean. Andrea Marshall depends on their help. After every dive, she evaluates her shots. Each manta ray has its distinguishing marks. She also works with genetic samples for what may be the world's most comprehensive manta ray data bank. Manta rays are worth a lot of money, and Mozambique is currently uh, ranked number four in terms of countries around the world that are profiting from um, uh, manta ray tourism. Um, and Mozambique is, is, is making so, sort of somewhere in the vicinity of seven to eight million dollars a year off manta ray tourism. Um, diving tourism. Manta ray diving tourism. And I feel that, you know, that definitely can be an incentive, you know, for government to say, listen, this animal is worth a lot more alive than it is dead. We've lost about 88% of the population in the last sort of eight to ten years. We don't really have much time to be able to, you know, rebuild those numbers before they're regionally extinct here. Even so, Mozambique has yet to place the manta ray on its list of protected species. <laughs> 